<laughs> I'm surprised I didn't cry on this video, but I was awesome. I was, man, it felt so good to just put that out there and not be ashamed of what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. And knowing that, man, I'm not alone. There's other people that are feeling the same thing, but maybe they don't have a voice. So I'm okay with being a voice to the voiceless. Maybe you love to speak it from the heart. Maybe you want to know and see more content. Please comment below. I'm going to be putting my, yes, information down on this video. If you love this video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel at hashtag VEO Young. Man, follow the movement. Social media, Facebook, Vancouver Elite Outreach. Instagram, Vancouver Elite Outreach. And Snapchat at Matt Five Young. Love you guys so much. Thank you for giving me your time. Man, I hope that I hit you right in your spirit, man. Your spirit, Roman. I hope that this causes a conviction. I hope that this causes a repentance. But I want to say thank you guys. And not only thank you guys, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me, yes, an individual that once was lost, but now is found because of you loved me so much that you gave me an opportunity to share the love of Jesus to the audience. Thank you guys. I hope all is well. I hope you all have a great night. Stay tuned. Please again, share, like, comment. And it may not be for you, but you may know somebody that is looking for a change inside out. Y'all stay blessed. Salute. Your boy out. Good night. Sleep tight. And don't let that bed bugs bite. No. All right, have a good one. <laughs> I don't know about you, but maybe right now in this time that you are in, maybe you feeling hardship, heartbreak, broken, fractured, let down, discouraged, quitting, giving up, why even try? I know exactly how you feeling. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Take three. No, I'm just playing to say my take three. This is the first one, edited version. I'ma just go off the top of the dome and let it happen. Speaking from the heart, yes, everybody, this is your boy, Matt Young. I'ma get serious, but also, I will be joking around, cause that's my sense of humor. But I want you guys to know who I am through the content that I make. And yes, the stories are transparent. They are real moments that I faced in my life. So I hope that this story, reconciliation, not only moves me, but also moves you, you guys that are taking the opportunity to say, press play, subscribe, like, share, and comment. What's going on this Friday evening? Hope all is well. I'm so excited to do this video. I was just driving home thinking about, man, you know what? There ain't nobody at the house right now. I might as well do a video. And I was thinking about a moment of my life that I had to face reconciliation. Now, a lot of y'all, I don't know about y'all, but man, I think sometimes the easiest thing in life is to love those who love you. Um, applaud for those who applaud for you. Man, scratch that dude's back who scratch your back. But the challenge that I'm still learning how to grow in and the challenge that I'm challenging you in is how to do it when nobody does scratch your back. How to love when nobody does love you. That's the challenge that I'm working with. And it's so crazy how much it shows me as an individual where I am at. Now, a lot of times you guys see the videos. Yes, it is all about cultivating and enhancing the individual to want to be the best version of themselves. But also too, I believe better mind, better lifestyle. And what no better way than to reconcile with those things that's in your life, in your closet, that maybe need reconciliation. Now I'm not saying that you gotta befriend it and best friends, but I'm talking about being in the place of your life where you can say, I can forgive me. You know, I can forgive auntie, I can forgive my dad, I, forgive, I can forgive my brother, my sister, I can forgive the coach. I can forgive the employee, but I can forgive the naysayers. I can forgive the negative people in my life that thought I wasn't gonna be nothing. 
that's what I'm challenging you with. That's the video that I'm going to be dropping. Reconciliation is so huge when you look that thing in the face or you look that woman in the face and be able to say, you know what? This is who I am. This is what I care about. You set so many different boundaries. There's a different respect that comes from inside out. It's crazy. It's so crazy. So I mean this, the story that I want to tell to you guys today. Now you guys already know, everybody always has a dream. When I was a kid, I had a dream. I didn't understand how sports were going to play in my life. But eventually, there is a time in your life where you really start seeing that maybe sports can be a way out. Now I guess I am a city, inner city youth individual that grew up gifted but fatherless. Now this is the thing that's different about me. I have empathy for the victim. But there's a time and day where you have to turn off the victim role and turn that story and being victorious. So you know, I had a why. I felt like if I could make it in basketball, I can get my mom out of all those domestic violence relationships that were just toxic. You know, I had a father, but at the time of my life, he wasn't active in my life. You know, there was a side of not just sin, but also stories of abuse. Sophomore year, I think it was when I met my father for myself. You know, you go so many years in your mind, in your heart, you allow that feeling to just be void of understanding that maybe you might not have a dad that's going to be around. So, yes, I was affected by that. But then there was a time where I just shut it off and didn't understand how much it affected me at that time or that moment. So I just kept going along, whatever rage, whatever frustration I had, I didn't understand until things were happening. Certain situations where maybe I was jealous of other youth that have father figures, family home settings. I didn't understand until I was actually in the situations. So I remember sophomore year, I was in computer class. Phone rings in the classroom, ring, ring, ring. They sent me down to the office, got called down to the office. I was in the office and they was like, hey, um, your dad's here. Man, I had this face on my, I had, uh, no, I had this weird face that was like, dad, <laughs> I ain't got no dad. So I remember He's like, right hey, son, and I'm looking like confused. Like, it's been over 10 years since I seen my dad. And I'm just lost. He got one of my siblings with him, girl at the time with him. And I was just so confused. I didn't know, but my brother knew, my mom knew. And I guess my dad knew that I had a lump sum of money coming. When I found out that I had this lump sum of money coming, my mind was like, bet on everything I'm about to pay for me to go to a camp that gets you exposure, but maybe it does cost some money to get there, but now I got this money. So that's the first thing I was thinking when I had the money. Who knows everybody else's intentions, but that was my intentions, was get this money, pay for myself to get exposed by National colleges, D1, JC, junior, junior colleges, NIA, D2, all of them. I was like, man, somebody's going to pick me up as a guard. I don't care. So that was my mindset. That was the focus. But the why was, like I said in the beginning, if I can make it, I can get my mom out of these domestic violence relationships. We can start all over, be different, be new. That was the goal. At first, you guys, your boy was skeptical. I did not want to do it. My big bro at the time that I trust dearly, that was a father figure to me, was like, yo, Matt, you got this money, man, da 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 da. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this quap. Go to this camp. 
He made me say yes to the situation just because I believed in him so much and I believed that his word was his bond. I trusted my bro. So it was like, okay, my bro trusts in this situation. I'm going to trust my brother because my brother's trusting the situation. So I was like, cool, bet. So we planned a day to go to the social security office and I was still nervous because I didn't know my dad and it wasn't really like a situation where it was like, son, how are you? What's going down? Man, I'm sorry that I have been so absent in your life. I think I've been a, a great understander when it comes to when people make mistakes. It hurts, but the truth hurts. But it really wasn't like that. So I remember just, just skeptical about it. End up going through with the situation, signing the papers. I'm in the 10th grade, not really knowing really what to do. Like, I ain't talked to my grandma. That might have gave me some wisdom. I'm just going off my bro and my dad and my own emotions at the time. Mine was not even there. So I ended up doing something that I didn't know what I was doing as a sophomore in high school. And next thing you know, I think it was about like a week, two weeks later, big bro called me and he was like, yo, Matt, what's up? What's, what you doing? I was like, man, nothing, man. How, how about yourself? Just communicating, talking, checking up. He go, I got something to tell you. And I was like, what's going on? He was like, man, dad took that money. Man, at that time, when that happened, man, something in me just, like, broke. Like, you know how, like, you see how when people remodel homes and they get to break the windows, the old windows, it's just like, shh. Like, that's how I felt like my heart did. Like, it just shattered. But everything, like, that was on that window, just describing the painted picture, it was like, mom, sister, bro, myself. All these dreams, all these goals that I just felt like I could do. And it was just like, somebody just come in and was just like, no, you're not, and shattered the window. Man, I broke inside. I'm just listening to the conversation, just crying, like, not even saying anything. I'm just crying. And then in the inside, I am so broken and not knowing really what to do. My bro, because we was like twins, you know, he was older, but everybody in our neighborhood would be like, man, is y'all twins? He was dark skinned, I was light skinned. But we just, that was our bond. Our bond is like inseparable. Connected without words, he felt what I was feeling. So I remember my bro, man, you know, at the time, he's still an artist, can't wait till some music, and he just get back to putting on that putting his heart on the paper, you know? But at the time, he was inspired to do a song. And I remember Big Bro destroyed that song. It was fire. And what I mean by destroyed and fire, it was great, it was good, you know? <laughs> but he destroyed that song. And felt my pain. Now I'm talking about reconciliation, man. I'm giving you a story, I'm giving you a problem, but at the time I didn't know who could be the solution. I felt like I was so broken, why not hurt somebody else or continue that pattern of breaking others? Still learning and still growing as an individual. With my decisions and choices that I've made as a, a man, as a young man. But this is why as an individual I say, the solver man in our relationships when we're reconciliation, the best person that can give you an experience that can change your life, you guys, is Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about, you know, 
going to church and you have a great experience and then you leave out and don't maybe not get a hold of that thing but I'm talking about the Spirit of God that wants to be in those moments where you feel led to reconcile with hurt, brokenness, pain. He wants to be there because in us we are weak but in Him He is strong. So I want to tie this testimony, this speaking from the heart moment with you to let you guys know that I think it was about, man, I think it was about probably I was 23, 24. And God was just working, just learning and reading and growing and not just dealing with people that love me now because I'm making better decisions. Man, God showed me how to still make better choices and love others. Maybe if they didn't like me or love me. So I remember this one time, I see my dad, I met up with my bro. Y'all know me, man. The ones that know me, I was a loose cannon. I was like, man, I love to fight. I That was me. That's how I learned in my environment how to express myself. No, no, no. Not telling you to go do that. Nah, I'm not telling you guys to do that. But all of us do have things that we do that we've learned in our environments. Who to say for me to tell you that that's wrong? I can't. But what I've learned through my frustrations and learning how to be aggressive, it got me nowhere, man. I was in jail. I was on probation at a young age. It got me nowhere, man. So for me to say that those things that I've learned, is it right? For me, no. Not at all. So I remember seeing my dad and, man, honestly, if I didn't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, every feeling but love would have came up. I remember he was trying to explain himself to me. Son, hey, I'm, and I said, Dad, save it. I love you. And it's not because of me that I love you. It's because of Jesus. That was the first time that with serious pain, I could start reconciling things that were broken in me. That was stopping me as an individual to go forth in my life, in my journey. Now, Matt Young, where are you at? I am at a place of my life where I have reconciled with all the hurt relationships that I faced in my time that I couldn't control and the time that I could control. If it wasn't for the Lord, man, I don't even know where I would be, just what the things that I was doing. Yeah, we all got strengths and weaknesses, but I was living a life of my weaknesses. No value, no self-worth, no confidence. Listening to other people that was like, man, you a cancer. When it comes to my mindset, my, my attitude towards winning, I got judged for my outer look instead of building and establishing a relationship to see who I am in the inside. But now, man, because of the, lo the love of Jesus Christ, and I'll continue to learn how to have a relationship with the love of Jesus Christ. Man, I'm better than I was yesterday. And it's not because of me, you guys. I'm not on this video to boast about me. It's a weakness, man. Humbling myself before him is not easy when I live in a society that it's about boasting yourself. It's about those dollars. It's about what car and whip you got, how much you got in the bank account. We live in a society where we want to thrive off of that. Man, I'm in this world, but not of this world. I serve a King of Kings and Lord of Lords, where he is the one and only that I'm going to glorify. He is the only one that at the end of the day, I thirst and hunger for his approval. So you guys, don't ever feel scared to reconcile that hurt in your life. I'm not saying that you have to befriend those relationships. But the best thing that you can do in life is, for one, ask for forgiveness. 
forgive yourself and ask for when it's the right time to be able to receive and ask for forgiveness for those you've hurt. Now, I'm gonna wrap this thing up, man. Maybe this video, I don't know, man. I'm hoping that this video can move you. I hope that this video touches your heart. I hope that this, this, this video goes viral because we've all in our lives has dealt with some hurt, some letdown, some empty, empty moments in our lives. And I'm just praying, man, that you can take the time to either comment on this video, write me, comment, share, or like. And I hope that my testimony and my journey and my story can impact you and move somebody. If it's you individual, or maybe it might be a loved one or a friend that needs some encouragement, needs some speaking from the heart. Reconciliation has been the best thing, but the hardest thing, but the greatest thing that I can ever accomplish and go through and share the story to teach somebody else to accept the hurt and grow from it so they can move forward and have a beautiful life.